Okay, so on this one, um, they're giving us a word problem. The width of a rectangle is nine less than twice its length. If the area is 23 square centimeters, what is the length of the diagonal? What is the length of the diagonal? That's an interesting question. Okay, so, um, all right. So let's, let's try drawing a nice little triangle here. So I'm gonna, I mean, a, a rectangle. Draw a rectangle. Yeah, and um, this one has a width and a length. But it specifically says the width is nine less than twice the length. So the width equals nine less. Remember that nine subtracted at the back? Then twice length, huh? Everybody good there? That's, I'm just following the words. The width is, is means equals, huh? Nine less, the nine goes to the back, then twice length, okay? And then it says over here, area is 23. Let me write that. Area. And what's the area formula? How do you find the area, which means all the space inside of a rectangle? What's the formula for all the space inside of a rectangle? It's length times width. Do you know what I mean? Like, for example, if this thing was, you know, let me just do it for instance. What if this thing was three squares high and four squares wide? Ignore my terrible drawing there. Wouldn't there be 12 total squares, right? Three rows of four, right? Or four columns of three or however you want to say it, right? Four, four, four by three, there'd be 12, right? There'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 squares of carpeting, for example, on a carpet that room, huh? See how you just take one side by the right? There's, it's three squares tall and one, two, three, four squares wide. They just multiply one side by the other, don't you, to get the total area inside of a rectangle? I just want to let you know that's where that formula comes from. It's not some magic thing that nobody knows why. It just makes total sense. Space inside of a rectangle, one side times the other. So area inside of a rectangle is just one side times the other. Okay, and they're telling us the area is 23. So 23 is length, and then what's the width? 2L minus 9. So what happened there? So I just plug in the width is 2L minus nine. That's what they said right here. And I plugged in the area as 23. In that little area form. Okay, so now what happens from here? Now we distribute this L, 2L squared minus nine L. Right, it's distributed there. And now look, I have an L squared equation. You, you can make that an X if you want, whatever. How do you solve an X squared equation? Well, that's what we've been doing in this section is solving X squared equations, but we have to first get a zero. So let's, let's so, so now solve the L squared equation. So now I'm gonna solve the L squared equation. And step number one is going to be get a zero on one side. So I'm going to come up to this and go subtract 23 oops, from both sides. And that will make it zero equals 2L squared minus 9L. Minus two. If you remember, you got to get a zero first before you can identify the A, B, and C. Now I'm going to plug into the quadratic formula. Right? Remember the quadratic formula? I'm going to plug into that. Now this is my A is two, my B is negative nine, and my C is now negative 23 instead of it being regular 23 because I had to move it over, huh? That's important. It makes a difference, doesn't it? All right, so the quadratic formula, what is it? Well, it is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. 
all over to it. So plug in the A, B, and C to that quadratic formula. All right, so what do we have here? Negative B, so it'd be negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times A times C all over two A, right? I'm gonna grab the stuff. B is what? Negative nine, which is sloppy. Negative B plus my square root of B squared, right? I'm grabbing B here, negative nine. Plus four times A times C, which is negative 23 all over two A, two times two, huh? And so what is that? Well, double negative is gonna make that positive, right? See what happened there? Double negative makes positive. So, and then nine squared, 81. And watch out, count your negatives are positive, you know, two negatives. So remember when you're multiplying those, I'm just count those. I've got two negatives. So that's gonna become positive. And then I gotta use my calculator. What's that? Four times two, eight times 23, 184, big number. All over times two is four. Okay, so what does that equal then? Now, It's going to be nine plus or minus squared. Now, 184 plus 81, I'm getting 265 over four. Okay, so now we got to use our calculator. We're going to get two possible answers. We're going to get nine minus the square root of 265 over four or nine plus the square root of 265, right? We have the plus and the minus options. They're both those. So now put those into your calculator. This is a long problem. Even after we get this, by the way, these will not be the answer. We have another whole thing we have to do. It's a very challenging problem. So, the, uh, so when you type this in your calculator, you're gonna go nine subtract square root of 265. And then remember, you gotta hit equals when you're done with the top before you divide, equals and then divide by four and equals again, right? You got to hit equals when you're done with the top before you divide by the bottom. That way the whole top is divided by the uh, denominator instead of just the uh, last item. Got to hit equals at the end of the numerator. I'm do that on my calculator right now. And I'm getting negative 1.8197. Um, right. Okay. And now the other one, the other option. Again, you got to hit equals when you're done with the numerator. So nine plus the square root of 265. Hit equals before you go divided by four. And then you got to hit equals again for the final answer. So nine plus square root of 265 equals divided by four equals. I'm getting 6.3197. Okay. So now, okay, so which one of those is the answer? Actually, neither one. We have a little more work to do. How do you know? How, how do I know this? Well, remember, what, what did this all come from? What is this? This is L. We were, we were solving this L squared equation, remember? This is L. These are answers for L. Okay, so what? Well, that means this is L equals L equals. And, and what is L? I mean, what in the real world is L? Well, it's, it's the, um, right here. It's the length of the side of the rectangle, huh? It's the length of the side of the rectangle. By the way, not the diagonal. That's a whole nother bit of work. That's why it's such a hard problem. So right now, we're just in phase one. All that work is just phase one. And we're trying to find the L, which according to my diagram, is the length of one side. Now, wait, where's the, what's the diagonal? Will that be here? We'll do that in a minute. We're going to do that in a minute. Right now, I'm just finding L, which is the side 
of the rectangle, right? On the picture, that L is inside the rectangle. So which one do you think it is? If I had a rectangle and I measured, I said, hey guys and gals, my rectangle, the side of it, the link, it's negative. It's the weirdest thing. It's a negative. That's, that's, that's baloney. Remember, math is made up to describe things that are real. Sometimes math goes beyond reality. Math doesn't know you can't have negative rectangle sides in the real world we live in. If we had some other kind of universe where you could do that, okay, but we don't, right? Chuck it. Just chuck it. Don't even let it bother you. Just keep right on moving. Say to yourself, I knew math wasn't real. Math isn't real. Math is made up. To describe things that are real. Every now and then it gives you baloney answers. Throw it away. This is the real link. You can't have a negative link. So this is the real length of the side of the rectangle, right? But now we need to find the diagonal. How are we going to do that? Well, let me, let me draw. Let me come back to my picture. Well, let me redraw it. <laughs> All right, so I'll redraw it down here. Okay. And um, the L... Remember this, this is the L, and this is, what was this, 2L something or other? 2L minus nine, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take that L that we just got, that's 6.3197, we'll plug it in right there. So this is 6.3197, and then down here, this is two, times 6.3197 minus nine. I'm plugging in L to both of those. Okay, I'm using my calculator. By the way, notice I'm using four decimals. You've got to use four decimals. If you, if you use less than that, you will get everything wrong. Four decimals or more. You can use five, six, seven, or eight. Four or more. So what do I get to here? This becomes 3.6394. Everybody see that? So now I've got the two sides of the rectangle. I still don't have the diagonal. I'm close now. Let me redraw the rectangle again. This is a long and challenging problem. So what do we want? We want, we want this diagonal, don't we? We want the diagonal, call that X. That's the diagonal. That's what they asked us for up here. The length of the diagonal. That was mean of them, huh? How do we find the diagonal? Well, now we know the side is 6.3197. Oh, <laughs> shoot, ran out of room there. And the bottom, is three, it doesn't look like it. The bottom looks bigger, but it's not. We know those two sides now, don't we? Because we did the work to find L and we plugged in L here and plugged in L here. Now we have that. How can we find that X now? We've done this before. A squared plus B squared is C squared. It's a right triangle. Huh, remember that? This problem has everything in the world in it, doesn't it? So we're gonna do, this is A, B, C. Remember the quadratic formula? We got a little bit more work to do here. A squared plus B squared is C squared. So the A is 3.6394 squared plus the B. 6.3197 squared equals C squared. C is X, right? C is X. So I'll just say X squared. So hit the buttons on your calculator. I'll do that right now. But important we're using four decimals all the way through. So now I'm getting... 53.1838 equals x squared. Last step to get regular x. What do we do? Square rooted, huh? Remember how square roots cancel out second powers? 
So hit the square root button on your calculator. And boom, 7.2927. I think they want you to round it to two places. Cut it right there. 7.29. That's the length of the diagonal. That was a crazy amount of work, wasn't it? So let me let me recap what we just did. Look at that. So from the beginning, we had a rectangle. They told us had a length and a width. They told us the width was 2L minus 9, right? 9 less than twice the length. Then I used the area formula, which is length times, that's the space in the middle of a rectangle. And they told me that's 23 equals L times the width, which was 2L minus 9. Got an L squared equation. So that subtracted 23, got a zero, plugged into the quadratic formula. Worked through that, found two answers for L, threw away the negative one, kept the positive. Put that back in the triangle, plugged in that L then to L and 2L minus 9, got the two sides of the, of the rectangle, and then I could find the diagonal using the A squared plus B squared is C squared. There we go.